Come on, Rangers. Come on, Rangers. We missed the whole game. Four games to go, four points from the top. Dorking Wanderers are looking for their fourth win in a row against Concord Rangers, a team for whom the season is effectively already over. Concord took all three points when the clubs met on the opening day of the season, so the threat to Dorking's title chase is real. Not that one would sense any tension around Meadowbank, which is a typically upbeat place to be. At least it is for the players and staff of Dorking Wanderers, for the crew of bunch of amateurs, it's a day when filming goes slightly awry. And while we may just be able to cover up our own shortcomings during this edit, we may be forced to acknowledge them as the show goes on, which of course, it must. With these up today, the message is going to be press the holding player, who's a good player, okay, um, which we'll be able to do anyway, but we'll make sure that it Mac is assigned to him off the ball. They've got some really good players, mate. Listen, they've got some great players. They've, they've only been beaten 15 times in 38 games. Right, that's the stat I always look at in these teams. So they know how to get a result. So this would be a typical tough game. We can forget the 4 0 Welling, 3 0 Chip and all that shit. It's a different day of the week. Okay, so who are you? What are you doing here today? Uh, Chris Search, obviously manager of Conkle Rangers. Uh, Travelled down from uh, up from Essex to, to come along for the. National League game, obviously one of our last five remaining games and looking forward to meet Mark and the boys. Four games to go, four points in the title race. We need probably three, four points to secure runners up. We could even secure that today, to be honest, if results went um, elsewhere, which would be phenomenal. But um, we, at the moment, we want to think that there's still a league title out there because they're Possibly is, but we need a little bit of uh, things to go our way. My hope, I think the, the club's hope, obviously, with uh, keeping things real, was obviously to maintain our status in the league, which obviously I think we, we achieved last last week with the results going our way. I think myself and the management team, our, our targets were, were slightly higher than that. Um, you know, we always felt that we could we could probably overachieve, if you like, and that was our target to, to, to probably, in all honesty, at the start of the season was to try and make playoffs. You know, I think it was a little bit too ambitious as it's proved, but. Well, it, it, they've just survived relegation in terms of like, they're going to be in this league next year. That's 10 years in this division. Um, a club that sort of like, has had one careful owner like Dawkins Wanderers, Ant Smith, really good guy on the Canvey Island. And um, they've never played here. We've played at their place four times, a bit lopsided. And they're a team that worked really hard for the manager. And we had a bit of a bizarre episode there, first game of the season. We had a sending off. We had an injury that was season long that ended up being half a season long to Fogden. Josh Taylor was sent off. Jason Prime missed a the penalty. They scored a penalty. And we had about, you know, 15 shots on target and got unsuccessful. Yeah, I think it's, 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 it's the same really as, a, as the first game of the season. You know, we, we know what, I know what Mark's teams are about. You know, it's very much that he worries about them and, and not so much about us. And it's a great way to be. You know, he's got some fantastic players here. He's got a fantastic philosophy on how to play football, but he also knows how to. You know, I, I think sometimes it gets he gets a little bit uh, underestimated about how you know his tactical know-how and, and how shrewd he is. You know, I think it's great to have the players and, and to be able to put them out, but to actually go out there and implement a, a game plan as he does. Um, yeah, they try and play football, but they also, when they need to vary it up, they'll play territory, they'll spin it in behind. You know, so I've got a lot of uh, a lot of respect for Mark and the way his teams play. And I think if you look at where we are this year, look at where we were last year. This squad, with the additions we brought in as well, this squad in this division next year would take a load of beating if they were fit. So we wouldn't want to change too much. The windy weather is causing all sorts of issues with our microphones, but even inside there are problems, such as when Mark puts his on the table and forgets to put it back on. Given that our cameraman has missed the start of the team talk and one of the GoPros is about to turn itself off for no discernible fucking reason, and the late arriving cameraman is going to find himself in shot, this team talk is lucky to make the final cut. In my head today I'm thinking, a team that's there for the taking, they've conceded, only three sides have conceded more, um, more goals than these, they've conceded 60. The more you're doing that ball, Dan, the more we're going to lose the game. Always remember that in your head. 
Yeah, that, that's a ball we don't want to play as much. We, we do it out of desperation. Um, the main thing to do is to do it quick. So when you get the ball, you should be looking at Cheadle's big ass running off that way. Yeah. Um, Isaac. Yeah, and you should be fucking on your toes thinking who's getting it. And all you should be doing, yeah, is opening out. Is that all right? Yeah. You haven't got a massive ass. <laughs> <laughs> all you should be doing, all you should be doing, Cheat, is just opening out and putting it in there. Yeah. yeah. But what's great is what, what's impressive, like last week, what a difference this makes. Is like, Nicky, when you've set him last week, and then Cheat is set with a ball, and he's got that fucking hammer in him. So when these teams tuck in like they did last week, and Jimmy's like a fucking kid at school going like, go on then, go on then, you know, but it's a two or three times a game ball, which is all you've done. But it, it, but it can open up the team and we can score. But, so, but, but that's the sort of variety. Isaac, same for you. You should be doing that ball. <laughs> it's like, yeah, but Jimmy ain't the keeper. <laughs> um, <laughs> no, <laughs> I said I'll give it a go. <laughs> don't, don't bother. Don't, no, 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 you don't do that ball. Um, but, what, but what you should do, right, okay, is that when it, you know, we're trying to, remember what you said at training, we're trying to play out of the press. Yeah. So we're playing back into it if we're, if we feel like we're massively under pressure, no problem, yeah? Um, or if we think you've had a loud enough call from you lot because you can see the land landscape's change and you're saying, all right, come back out, we're about to go out that side, yeah? I think about what it means to, 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 to achieve something, right, yeah? And the only time you can actually do something about it, it ain't when you're looking at the newspaper or your phone, it is when you turn up and you warm up and you play. That is when you can do something about the situation, all right, boys? So let's turn it on like we do. We're in great form, okay? Let's go, boys. There weren't many Concord fans to seek out for an interview. Around seven was the ballpark figure. Fortunately, we found Richard, who is a member of the committee. So I'm Richard, um, member of the committee. I've been supporting Concord for about seven years now. In my seventh season coming up, yeah, yeah, it's really How did good. How you get started with that? For me, I, I follow South End because they're the local club. Um, for me, but I it started to get too expensive. And years before that, I followed the Arsenal, and that was getting too expensive. So Concord is only like a five-minute trip from where I live. So I just went there one night to watch Concord play friendly against South End. Got into it, found it was a really nice club, really well-run club, and followed them from there. Really, I follow them all over the country. It's just the atmosphere, it's just friendly atmosphere and it, uh, the thing about non-league football is you can start up one end of the pitch and w watching your boys scoring the goals and then you, at half time you can go to the other end. Yeah, today unfortunately we're segregated for some reason, there's only good, there's going to be seven of us here today at most. So I just like the fact that it's a friendly atmosphere, it's not, it's not, you bring kids along, you go to Dulwich, the whole family goes out for the day, it is a good, it's a good setup. non-league football, I love non-league football. There'll be about ten... And anything between 10 and 15 of us today, but we'll make a lot of noise. There'll be a lot of noise from us, so yeah. It's good. It comes to the end of the season. We're safe. We're not going anywhere. We're not going up. We're not going down. That's great. You know, so many years in the league now, we should be proud of that, and it's, it's a well-run club. Yeah, so don't listen to these lot. <laughs> right, don't listen to these I've, lot. I've heard him all before. Oh, Wait, bear in mind, they're under no fucking pressure. <laughs> This is a, this, this is a day yeah, out. This is a day out today. This is a day out for these lot. We're swinging, can't we? <laughs> you good, mate? Yeah. yeah. What's happening? All right. Yeah, not, yeah, all right, mate. Yeah, not bad. Oh. Not bad, mate. That's the uh, pressure's on now, isn't it? Really? Do you know what, mate? Yeah. To be honest, I'm just like fucking hiding to nothing for us, really. We had such a fucking shocker. We were talking about oh, we? we had a shocker, mate. We had a shocker, mate. You had, you had injury off. We had honestly about 15 games, about five or six missing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I just. To be where we are, we've done fucking well, to be fair, do you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. no, absolutely. So we're yeah, just sort of, well. we're thinking worst case here, we'll get a couple of home se um, semi, you know, playoff final and that. That'll do us. Crowds have gone up, so it's, like, it's not all bad, do you know what I mean? I've been seeing that, you look quite, you look quite busy down here. Mm. Get this good, boys, oi! Let's get this good, come on! That, um, that Pollock ain't playing the centre half, he's their best player. Yeah, yeah. So he ain't playing. Yeah. They've got some young lad. Take it easy, boys. Season's done, isn't it? Nice and chilled today. <laughs> Do 
Right, do we need to maybe just Google the other centre half and I'll just. Google him. He's. It said something about Cambridge, Cambridge United. <laughs> do it done the other week. Go and get a goal in the first five minutes, yeah. and then we'll set us up for a good day, won't it? Captain, make sure they're all macker. Make sure the boys are fucking like, you know what I mean? Here we go again, yeah? Dan, make sure that info's really good in here, mate. We go again, right? We go again, okay? Come on, we go again. Let's go through your head right now. Uh, I don't like wind. I don't like the wind, but it is what it is. And I'm also thinking I'm going to be cold. Do I take a coat or not? I was just thinking then, what's the crowd going to be? I think it's going to be like a, a 900 job. Um, and I'll tell you why, because last day of the season today, Lev Red have got an absolute like do or die game at home. It's step five and step four and step three, last games of the season. Fast forward to us through Dulwich a week Monday, place we rammed. So I think today the, the, the sort of weight was going to be taken out, the neutral was going to be taken out of it. What do you look for in a warm up? Uh, you guys always come against a great warm up, it's a shit warm up. Uh, talking, how, how, how quick it is how quick the feet are, communication, just general sort of, are they up for it, are they walking about? I look at the opposition as well sometimes and just think, are they strolling about or not, you know? Fantastic, fast start, yeah? That's what we're looking for, lads. Play this game at the wondrous pace. Now, whilst I'm saying to you, fast start and all the normal rhetoric, at the same time, neat and tidy, you know, at the same time controlled. 90 minutes is a long time to beat this mob. We don't have to beat them in the first 10. We'll just take our chances when they come our way. Dan Lincoln, we're relying upon you, mate. You are the fucking quarterback. We're relying upon you to get the ball moving. But what Lincoln needs, Cheeto and Philpot and Dan, it's in good movement early. All right? Dan, we'll play central if it's clear and obvious. If they're out of shape, it, bosh, give it and then loads of information on the next ball, turn out, whatever it might be. All right, boys, let's go. Come on, come on, come on. Come on, Jack, another clean sheet. Come on, score goal, let's go. Okay, let's go, stand this Good luck, boys, same again, Joshie. Let's go, DJ, come on, mate. You're coming across, come across. Hello, hello, mate. You alright? Right? Good sight, yeah. Is that put a tea bag in it, is it? No, no. Fuck it. Huh? Cheers, mate. Now, we have to point out that we'd normally have two to three camera angles, but it would appear someone, and we're not naming names because it was me, inadvertently deleted an entire camera from the archive. Meanwhile, the coverage camera is in the wrong frame rate. But this game has got so much going on, we knew we just had to make the most of what we've got. So forgive us our camera trespasses. Fortunately, Claire on camera A was in good form. Yeah, 4 2 3 one, mate. Carl and Dino have figured out Concord's 4 2 3 1 formation, which means Dorking have a comfortable overload at the back. Ben Williamson's clumsy challenge on DJ Oldacre gives Dorking their first shot on goal. And Mark is keen for Jordan Cheadle to finally fulfil his free kick promise. Cheadle! Cheadle! So obviously they're leaving man for man, so that is a gamble. Jordan Cheadle is yet to find the nets for Dorking, but with Jason Pryor in the starting eleven, the pressure is off everybody else. Despite the awkward nature of the header, Pryor manages to direct the ball in off the post, beating Miles Roberts and giving Dorking yet another early lead. DJ! Good! It's the kind of start Mark and company dreamed of, but when Nanakai gets goal side of Isaac Philpott, the Dorking manager has to consider how to deal with an early yellow card. Stay with these, 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 look around you! It's a booking, it's a booking. It's a fucking stupid booking and all. It is a stupid booking. Fucking five minutes. We would like to take this moment to point out that if you get your non-league club shirts from fcfootballkit.com, there's a good chance they'll get pulled because they're such nice shirts, the opposition will want to rip them off you. What's he doing? It's too long, mate. <laughs> fucking hell! Did you fucking email him? 
While Dan's trying to get the ball out, Mark's brain is scrolling through the options of how to deal with Isaac's early yellow. Ed! Ed! Three minutes! You doing it? Yeah. No mucking about. No mucking about at all. I ain't having a fucking memory of that game was one up and Isaac got fucking an unlucky second yellow. Well done! I'm not going to do it yet, just stay well. I'm not quite sure whether it's tick or twist. It's going to happen fucking soon, but I'm not sure what to do. Isaac's minutes are clearly numbered, but if Alfie gets his way, the game will be decided pretty soon anyway. Follow up, follow up, follow up. Can goalie do it? Yeah, the problem is, what I'm saying to Dino is, when they've got the wind and they can put the ball there, we're going to have to do it at half time. But if they haven't got a lot of the ball, let's just see how it goes. But it's such a volatile thing when we don't need to. We don't remember this game for, oh yeah, if it weren't for Isaac's second shit yellow. He's given a few quick, rash decisions to ref, and he hasn't given one there, do you know what I mean? Yeah. Wanderers are winning the ball in midfield, and Rangers are giving James Isaac, McShane more Isaac, space than an episode of Red Dwarf. We are running out of more space than analogies. Or is it metaphors, or is it similes? I don't even know. Shane unlocks the Concord defence and plays in Jimmy Mewitt, whose perfect cross is turned in by the left foot of Alfie Rutherford. And it seems the second goal has sealed Phil Potts' fate. Eyes. Got to do it, mate. Team game, team game. Come on. Dan. Got to do it, Eyes. Got to do it, mate. Got to do it. I don't want to give away a fucking summit shit. I know, I know. Got to do it. That's match play. That's match play. Get your head up. That's match play. We've done it another week with Dan. He smiled his head off. You do the same. Go. I can't afford, listen, I can't afford you not to be able to foot, not, A, not to be able to put a foot in, which you can't. This, he's given about four rash decisions already, the bloke. Do you know what I mean? And all of a sudden, right, we're down to 10 and it's fucking your fault and it ain't your fault. You know what I'm saying? Right? So we've got to do the right thing for the team, Isaac. Phil Potts is understandably frustrated particularly as he now has to watch his teammates enjoying themselves. Oh. 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 50p ad. One more goal, this is dead. You get it now, didn't you? You've had three minutes, you get it. We've got no choice. Imagine going down a, I know, imagine going down a 10 against these. Listen, if we're mid-table, it don't matter, is it? Do you know what I mean? But we're not mid-table, you know what I'm saying? Back in the Dorking goalmouth, Dan Lincoln is looking to pick somebody out and the Dorking bench have spotted that Jason Pryor is unmarked. Jason! Jason! The hole there is massive. Jason! Do it! Do it, Dan! Yeah, give me it. Swap it for the chewies. It's me, it's me last pack. Lincoln goes even longer to the chest of Rutherford and Dorking's attack is taking shape. Come on. Oh, mate, he loves it. He's created his own phase of play. And do you know what? He actually said, he actually called Alfie. No, could he have done that Alfie. one last week? Could he got that one up one at winning? Next goal, come on! James Blanchfield musters Concord's first attempt on target. And when Dan gets his hands on the ball, Mark is keen to make sure he sticks to the short ball script. Don't go long! Don't keep going long! Play! One of the issues that Mark now faces is that, having set the precedence with Isaac's yellow card, no other players can afford to make a late challenge. Fuck off, ref! Anyone play right back? <laughs> ain't a fucking booking, Alex! It ain't a booking, he's late! That's we got a long day. It absolutely is a booking, and we think the bench probably know that. Dan, stand your feet! Or I'll stop you! I ain't got any more subs! Fucking <laughs> like Mitch, when's the last time you played right back? <laughs> Life's about to get more complicated still for the Dorking bench. Dino's noticed that Nick Wheeler is clutching his hamstring. Hammy? Who? Nicky! Are you done? Are hey, you struggling, mate? Isn't he? Nicky's oh, fine. Oh, yeah, but no, I'm not. No, no are you yeah, okay? Yeah. Is that you 100% okay, that hill? No, don't say if you are. Are you okay? Could I have Bob sitting here? Do you know what I'm saying? Are you okay? 
One person who is undoubtedly fine is Alfie Rutherford. He just needs a header to complete a perfect hat-trick. Bobs, you're down on. You're down on. No, I'm putting Bobby on. I'm being sensible. I'm looking sensible. Neat and tidy. Really neat and tidy. Don't pass into the press. Balls in the box for Pryor. Or cut inside and score. Balls in the box for Pryor, cut inside, or around the corner for Alfie. Let's have a great time. Come on, Bob, yeah? Not too sure, Alex, about your first half, mate. The fucking... Mate, no, who's fucking... Ow! Come on. Well done. Well done, absolutely fantastic. Um, listen. Can we have a bit of a reset, OK? A bit of a reset here, OK? In our head right now, this is what we're playing for. We're playing for you not to get injured. You've got to think about discipline because you don't want suspensions. We want to keep this run of form up, don't we? That's what we really want. Forget what happens. If worst case, we end up in a playoff semi-final in front of 3,000, we want to be in this type of form. So it doesn't matter what the score is. What matters is, can we just be almost robotic in our discipline, our shape and how we play? I know we're getting joy long, but don't keep going long. Use it when it's there, but if not, get our pattern going so we don't forget how we play, <coughs> right? Now, has anyone got any tips, genuinely, on how we're going to score a goal second half here? Honestly, has anyone got any ideas? <laughs> No, I, I, I ain't got a clue what to do. I don't want to bollock you, yeah? but anyone got any tips? <laughs> right, I don't know what to say. I don't know what to say. Um, their direct play now is going to be like, you know, you two are going to see the ball. Because their keeper is going to fucking smash the granny out of it straight down the pitch. Okay? Now, what that'll do by default if you're smart footballers, he understands that when we win it back, we're going to win it back and they're going to be more stretched. So it's going to be a lot easier to spin it and play early. Don't get involved in shit. Can we quiet and calm, cool down? When you're walking out there, start talking to the bloke who's marking you. He's always tricking the book, do you know what I mean? All the good centre half back in the day used to do it to centre forward, just start talking though. Fucking, you're still here next year, mate. Do you know what I mean? All that stuff. Oh, right, yeah, I don't know, mate. You know, get his head off the game, right? Just be smart, okay? You're 4 0 up. Don't make it a con call battle. That would be not smart, okay? And I'll tell the bench the same. All right, boys? Exhilarating stuff. Can we do it a little bit more? Come on. The main match camera wasn't working for the first 10 minutes of the second half, so the only way to show you what happens will require the angle that's in a different frame rate. And it's more jittery than me after I went on a coffee date with a girl despite never having drunk coffee. The plot twist being that when I asked her what she was drinking, she said hot chocolate because she doesn't drink coffee. But at least it wasn't a tea without milk. Who's is that? Take no, fucking, give me a tea, no fucking milk in it. I mean, milk. I have a tea bag in it. But what fucking chance of getting no milk in it? <laughs> this ain't easy in the wind. Away! How do we not know to be there, man? Concord make a mess of the clearance and Jordan Cheadle swivels to finally find the net for Dorking, albeit from a rather fortuitous deflection. We played five. <laughs> we are going up! We are going up! Dorking are five up and yet trouble is brewing. This is because the pattern of play from the back is not on script. Go back and get it! See, look, you let him stay up now. You had a spare man, the Drake's just telling him. He's still saying play. They've changed like a three, no. so it's not a 4 2 3 1. They've dropped the 10 four, back three, in deep. It's a 4 3 3. That's what they've done. Early! It looks like camera woman Claire has remembered to press record, but worryingly forgotten how to follow the ball. I'm done. Play! Play! Give him it! 
Ed! Ed! There he is! Dawkins' build-up play from the back is at best stuttering. Yet it becomes far more effective when Miles Roberts picks up Louis Ramsey's back pass. Yes! Yes! He knows as well. As soon as he passed, he picked him up. He knew. Casino! Oh, oh, DJ! DJ side. DJ! Casino's just got a thunderbolt now, hasn't he? DJ Oldacre wallops the ball past Roberts from eight yards out and Dawkins goes six up. Mark's concerns over second half goal scoring are finally allayed. The six goal deficit doesn't change Mark's approach, possibly with an eye on the goal difference, but mostly because that's just what he's like. I'm slipping now, mate. I think it's like for light they've just replaced. Speed it up. Can we speed it up, Jukes? Speed it up! Speed it up! Half an hour! Speed it up! Yeah, we've got 3v2 here. Great, yeah, yeah. Oh, that's oh, shit! Oh, that's crap. He missed it. I fucking hate conceding goals. Substitute Ryan Scott returns the ball into the box and fellow replacement Temi Babalola converts. And he's clearly a half glass full kind of chap as he grabs the ball in that we're not out of it yet, lads kind of way. But these games are hard though, in these situations. McShane very nearly makes it seven, despite Concord looking the more likely team to score at this stage. Runners, boys. Well done, Bob. If you happen to be playing a dorking uncovered drinking game, then prepare to get blattered on the Mark Shouts Bobby Chestnut. Oh, oh my Bobby! Well done! Oh my God. Is this a fucking wind-up? Bobby! 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 You can win that three times! Babalola is deemed offside when the ball comes in and the striker is having an impact, which should be of some concern to the Dorking bench. They can't keep going. Fuck me. fuck is that? I can't believe that we can't just work out such a simple phase of play, mate. Honestly, it's so easy. Boys! Runners! Nice! Oh my god! Blanchfield and the influential Babalola combine and Concord have a second goal. Bobby, you want to get Bobby? Bobby, get him to get on shape, get the pattern. Why are we doing this? Jesus Christ. Far post. It's not tight enough, look. Who got the fucking eight? The shape ain't changed either, mate. It's the fucking same as what it was in the fucking start. Jimmy! Jimmy! So it's Josh and fucking... Ed! Foggy, no? Ed! So Josh is the eight, yeah? Do it to Ed! Do it to Ed! Do it! Josh will be the eight. Taking too long. We're gonna fucking smash it, the fucking Jimmy Murat. Oh my god. Right, let's look, 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 look. Look. The Blonky. Yeah. The four and the eight, we're not even marking them. We're not even fucking marking them there. Wow, this is so bad. Sideways, Dan! DJ, make an option! Press, Dan up! Go on, Dan up! Press! Show your side! Press! Like little Miss Moffitt's dropping her bowl on the floor, Dorking have lost their way, and more worryingly, midfielder Wes Fogden has developed a muscle problem. Foggy's limping. Foggy's limping. I think he just held his hamstring. Who? Foggy. Get out, get out, DJ, get out. 
Yeah. We've got to go down to 10, haven't we? So Alfie will be on his own. Maka just got a drop in centre mid where Foggy was, yeah? It's so like a free. No, stay as we are. Stay as we are. Yeah. Uh, Alfie, yeah. Yeah, no. What's it, Foggy? Done. How's your luck? Fuck me. Fucking eight players today. Fogden's hamstring is on its way out, and Old Acre is also struggling. That? Play, Dan! Play! Do it early! Come on, he's fucking. playing. Dan, Dan, it's easy! Dan, fucking play! When Dan Lincoln goes long instead of short, Mark loses his call like Fonzie on a water ski. But Vern said nothing. In the final moments of injury time, Concord remain on top at least until they give the ball to DJ. We've got house. Fucking kick him. Fuck it now, get close you can. That's hell of a goal, that. Having completed a perfect first half hat trick, Alfie caps the day with a fine solo goal to make it seven with Dorking's last kick of the match. The smart finish puts Alfie firmly atop the goal scoring charts, but Mark is feeling like a man who just found out Barry Glendenning is on every episode of Football Weekly this week. Well done, boys. So we can do. Me. Yep. See you later, mate. See you next year. See you next year, mate. Second half. I will watch it back. I will watch it back before I judge you. It was atrocious. When we do our patterns, because Dan, when I watch it back, he might rightfully say, apart from the one I've asked him to do, when Dan Gallagher stood there, by the way, I'll show you the one I told you, and you'll go, fair enough, Gaffer. He stood there. You'd made your mind up you weren't doing it. Some keepers enjoy kicking. You're one of them. I don't like keepers that love kicking. But you're a brilliant kicker. To kick it when we need it to be kicked. But he's in the frame of mind that it ain't there. Because you lot have got to make his mind up. We told you the patterns in advance. Right, the patterns are, he'll have someone go and rotate in the 10. He'll have that one on to look at. And he's got to be good enough to think I'm watching for that. Or if it's in the box, I said at training, we do it early. And then we just literally P-roll of it Jimmy to Jimmy or the other side, right? I'm telling you now, at the back, you've killed us the whole half. So what we're going to do, we're going to clip up every single fade of you lot having the ball, right? And you'll see how you've killed the entire team. We made them look like a better side than us because we started literally doing our own thing instead of doing what we do. You've got to be better than that because let me tell you, the art of fucking being good is to think under pressure. And when you're under pressure, you've got to think smarter and quicker, right? That weren't good enough. Make no mistake, that was fucking shit. I'm fucking fuming, okay? I told you what you can fucking win or lose in these games. The difference in that game was our finishing. Right, simple, simple, okay? That was the difference. I thought in midfield today, I, th I think we've had better games. I think we've had better games. You do understand, in the second half, they don't put a 12th man on, nothing changes. So why do we change doing what we do? We give it to the bloke really quick in the box. Dan, you give it to that bloke there. He goes, go on, Bobby, go on, son, feet, feet. Bobby, feet. DJ comes round, set. It's a collective effort. That is not the first time, under pressure, second half, we have not fucking played out. Not good enough at all. That was shit, ruined my day, 100%. I told you, and well done, Alfie, by the way, real highlight today. I told you, these games, you, you, what you get out of them, is the fucking processes. It's an opportunity to get the processes right. Right? Not good enough, okay? I'm fucking angry. I want to see you. I'll see you later. It's been ages since I fucking issued a fucking reprimand. I didn't like that. Who? I didn't know what to do, Rich. <laughs>
I hate it. He's apologised straight away. So I said, because I asked him, I said, did you hear me? I thought, if he says I didn't hear you, that's fair enough. If I was him, I'd have said, no, nah, I didn't hear you. Sorry, mate. He goes, yeah, I heard you. I said, well, that's why I fucking... Do you know what I mean? And then the back three, so what you get, a combination, A is, you can't quite work out, are they turning their back on it, or are they just in a position where they never get the ball, so they stop wanting the ball? Yeah. We've still got enough time to get positives into the team before the fucking playoffs if we end up there, yeah. But I can't let that go, man. I can't, you can't come in and go, oh, we could have played that, you, you can't let that go. It was too poor, do you know what I'm saying? We let a team, we let a team off the hook that should have been out the game, we let them off the hook because we couldn't play out. And most of all, and you can see, this is why you play players like Moro, because he'll actually get hold of it and he'll fucking make sure we're doing what we need to do. It, it is, it's hard playing games like that, isn't it? Like, when, you're, when you're cruising like that, but it still don't skew, it's still don't skew some of the things we've done. But what I'm saying is, the way we play, the way we play out, is designed to get it into a winger's feet. That's it. But the point is, when your pattern goes, it's like, it's like a pack of cards. It's like, it's like a wet cardboard box, it just collapses. So when you're trying to hit a long ball into Jimmy's head up there, and you're expecting to pick up a second, we're not a seconds yeah, team, exactly, yeah. right? All you've got to do, give it to Dan, like when he didn't listen, give it to Dan, Dan was stood next to him, Dan should be going mental, and just kick it to the winner. Good luck editing that, Rich. <laughs> Cheers, lads. <laughs> <laughs> Fucking hell. Rich, that's giving me a lot of versions. Yeah, yeah. But I was still surprised at the venom, actually, in that team talk. <laughs> yeah. um, how did that come about? Did, you, did that build up from there to there? Was it building up before the end of the match? No, no, yeah, no. Because I, I asked Dan to do a specific thing and he ignored me, which doesn't really happen here, um, ever. Um, so I was really pissed off about that. You know what I mean? I don't mind. Obviously, if we do things wrong, go down on my watch sort of thing. That's how it is. Um, yeah, so... I just thought, no, like, obviously trust is a really big deal in football and this could be the, you know, the biggest game of the season and if you don't think you can trust people to do what you say, then that's a big deal. But Dan Lincoln's been brilliant for us. He's actually been exceptional and, and our, our really good form coincided with him coming to the club and it's not easy to be a keeper at this club. And if we stop playing out, it is ultimately the keeper that we look at first. But today, the back three and the keeper weren't um, taking what we do at training into the game and dictating the, these, little, these small patterns that would have made a big difference if we started going long and direct. And the minute we're doing that, we are just a different team. And we can make other teams look really good within like a three minute spell because we're just not playing the way we play. Um, I, I don't necessarily think it's a bollocking. Um, I think it's just... Gaffer wants standards and obviously when, it's not the first time this year we've come out in the second half a little bit sloppy and I understand it's hard when you've scored four goals but you know if you've got to carry on with the form hopefully it may so drop some more points and it comes to the playoffs we won't be able to drop the standards in the second half because I mean it's one game only. I knew we was going to get it um, as soon as he started shouting at Dan just knew it jog straight in Went straight in there, just sat down in the corner, just watched it unfold pretty much. Is that what you want to do? Do you, do you want to just want to like retreat into yourself? Yeah, no, I don't, I don't like conflict, mate. I, I stay away from it. Any any chance of conflict, I get even on the pitch, I don't like it. Did you have any? Did you have any sense of it coming? Yeah, hundred percent, hundred percent. How come? Just that I, when it, when it happened and he shouted, it, I see the way he walked in the dugout. And he was just screaming, wasn't he? And then uh, after the game, he was fuming. You could see when he was walking across, he was fuming. He does so. a different kind of walk. Yeah, it's different. Group. Even though we've won, was it six two or seven? Seven two. You still ain't happy, is he? If you don't play well. No, no he isn't. It's not even play well. Doing what's what everyone expects, pretty much. We just gave up the ghost, and the game hadn't changed. Like they hadn't put an extra man on. It was a full press. Nothing changed. So what was the difference between the first half and the second half? Well. Agility, sharpness, mental sharpness. You know, Louis, our fitness coach, talks a lot about decision making when fatigued. He's an ex SAS man, and obviously, what they teach these people is it's all good and well being able to stroke your muscles down the gym and, you know, um, being super fit, but it's the decision making when you're fatigued, when you're tired. Do you step up or do you step away? And we've had a few second halves where we've been so in control we've just packed in the thinking because we're fatigued 
and that wasn't good enough and I kind of thought to myself on the way in, look, we've got three weeks left yet, so let's just have one of those, keep them on their toes today and then we'll forget about it Tuesday in our next game and by next Saturday it'll be long gone because Thursday we'll work on stuff, you know? But you personally, how did you feel your game went? Me, for myself? Yeah. I was alright, I think. Um, not, not the best I've ever played. But again, nowhere near the worst I've ever played. What do you enjoy most when you're playing? I don't actually know. I, I passing the ball. I like I like keeping the ball. I like just passing the ball about. But then a goal and assist. That, that always it's different now, isn't it? Like, that's that's my that's what I've always grown up doing. That's like Alfie when he scores. I think how the fuck do you do that? Can I swear? Do you really? Can I swear? Yeah, of course you can. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, I think how did you do that? Especially the last goal when I passed him through. And he just made it out of nothing pretty much. Yeah, he had no right to score. That's like you saying to me, how do I pass the ball? It's the same thing. How does he score all the goals? Really? Is that yeah. how you yeah, feel yeah, about yeah. even though you're playing yeah, the same yeah. sport? Yeah, because I don't try and do what he does and he doesn't try and do what I do. So it's like... Right, interesting. Yeah. I, f I think when you play a role that I do, you, you have spells in the game. Because, I mean, if I was in the game for 90 minutes, I'd be off at 60 minutes because... I'd be out of breath and I would be knackered. But I think when you play the role I do, you just need to keep staying active. And then when your chance comes, like you say, we here at Dorking, you get wave and waves and waves after attack. So you just need to be there when them attacks come about. You've been at the club for <laughs> five months now? Yeah, something like that. How's it been going for you? Oh, I love it, mate. Do you really? Yeah, I love it, yeah. Right around the corner from my house, right? the best club I've ever been at. 100%. <laughs> How are you not higher up? I've, just bad luck, isn't it? That's all I can say is bad luck. Meeting the wrong people. But yeah, that's Meet it. The wrong like me, my, meeting different managers, if a different manager like me. You know, it's, it's just all about luck, pretty much. And I wasn't lucky. So. I feel like you're lucky now, though. Oh, yeah. I, I, like I say, man, I love it here. I can't, like, I'm not a bad word to say, pretty much. I feel like I'm going to go around Dan Lincoln's house, watch the X Factor, get a curry and cuddle him. Right, because I'm getting a lot softer now in my old age. Um, but um, and I might even invite around the back three as well. And we'll all have like a Heineken each or something. And just go, look, come on, you know. And they go, yeah, we know, we know. Do you know what I mean? Um, now I'm going to go and watch my dog race. And then I'm going to go and um, we're looking forward to our next game. And the next weekend we play football in this division, we're going to know what's going on. It's going to be kiboshed and it's going to be all focused on this brilliant team with two home games in the playoffs or it's going to be a last ditch game of the season. Um, I feel like there's going to be a twist, but we have to take care of our business. It's Russian roulette and we can't put a foot wrong. Thank you for watching Bunch of Amateurs on YouTube. We really appreciate your support. A uh, quick word from our sponsor, fcfootballkit.com. Check them out. Their link is in the description. They supply some really bloody good football kits. If you're looking for a new kit for next season, you should definitely check them out. This week's comment of the week comes from... Tom Hobbs, who said, I think this is my favourite hat-sunglasses combo that Mark has worn so far. We googled some of his stuff and bloody hell. It's not cheap. Anyway, the reason we do Comments of the Week is because the more comments you guys leave, the better it is for us. So if you feel like leaving a comment and hitting like, that'll help us out. See you next week.